So I have another stove from Lixada. If you're interested in learning more about it, stay tuned. Okay, so in the interest of full disclosure, this has actually been a two-day video in the making. I was out last week and filmed the first use of this stove while doing another video, but I forgot to film the introduction. So I'm out again today and I thought I would share with you the introduction to this stove and how I came to find it and what some of my thoughts are, and then we'll go into the testing of it. So. I found this on eBay. I had been watching it for some time and I looked at it and it looked an awful lot like the Little Bug stove that's out of the UK. So that's what I'm going to call it, the Little Bug inspired stove from Luxada because it doesn't have an, any other name by Luxada. So let's get to the testing and see how this thing performs. Okay, let's take a look at the stove. So what we have is a very, very thin package. This is the way it arrived from China, is in this nice little nylon pouch, very simple little pouch with a Velcro clothes on it. I have put the weights on here just to remind myself. So the stove with the pouch comes in at 7.5 ounces or 213 grams. Incredibly light. So what do you get? Inside the pouch. Put the pouch aside. Four stainless steel plates. Four of them are identical and they're going to interlock to create the stove. So the way to do this, it took me a little bit of fiddling because of course there's no instructions on how this uh, is supposed to go together. So I'm going to give you a hint. If you decide one of these, maybe I can save you a little bit of uh, experimentation. Take one panel, holes down by your fingers. Take another panel, holes down by your fingers. Come in from the top and curve it into place from behind. Same thing with the next one. In from the top, curve it into place third one, or fourth one in this case, in from the top, curve it into place. Now here's the tricky part. You're going to fold it so that the two remaining edges fold inwards, meet at the top, and then come together. Now that's it. The entire stove assembled. You can see the Luxada name here on the side. So what you get also is a pot stand. And the pot stand is designed to be used in two ways. On each of the notches right here, I can probably bring it a little closer for you to see that. You can see it can engage the top of the stove either this way or upside down. So I don't think it makes a lot of difference except depends on if you want to drop your pot a little down or have it up a little higher off the fire. Today I'm going to be using it up on top like this. Keep it together while you're doing it of course. Make sure you're holding on to the one that... There, that was easy. I don't know why I made it so hard the first time. And there's my assembled stove. So what I have is I have split out a couple of pieces that looks like it may be old maple or oak now that I'm looking at it. It's punky. Uh, wouldn't make great firewood, but it makes a fine base. And that lifts me up off of the cold frozen ground and gives me a little bit of a support for the stove. And I'm going to build a little fire inside of the stove. And uh, I'm going to go for a bottom up burn today. I kind of contemplated, do I want to go up bottom up or top down? Either one would work with this stove. You can see it's well ventilated around the outside. I don't know, maybe I can even feed some sticks in through the sides of the stove once I get going. But uh, give me a minute, I'll get my stove set up, we'll get a fire going and we'll get some lunch on. Okay, I've collected up uh, some birch bark. I have some small pine twigs I'll snap up and throw on top as we get going. I have a little bit larger of spruce twigs. I'm not too happy with them. They feel kind of damp, so I may, may not use them. And I split up some dried maple that was dry. Uh, kind of, I've made it into short pieces so it'll fit inside the stove. They're about five, six inches long. I don't know, it's not the best looking wood, but we'll obviously get it going, see what we can't do. So today I'm just gonna start the birch bark. Very simple, throw a few sparks into what's here on the, on the pad. Find a nice stable spot to do it though. Put the knife aside. So I could have done this one of two ways, I guess. I could have built the entire fire from scratch inside of the stove. I may do that yet. Put the stove right over top of the burning birch bark. And just drop my smalls inside. So you can see this is obviously the first time I've used it. There's a lot to know about this stove. It's a nice spring steel, it's very lightweight, but how will it stand up over time? 
Boy's throwing some flame out there right now. I'll just keep throwing in some sticks here. So, in the summertime, how would I use this? I may use it exactly the same way. If I didn't have a rock base and I knew I could trust to be uh, safe to put on top of, I might do exactly the same thing, split some wood out. That, uh, try some of this other wood here, see if it's any good. Yeah, try some, uh, put it right on top of a rock or split some wood out, put it on top of that. I think I may start carrying a piece of tin foil with me. The tin foil will help protect the ground, but it'll still scorch through if it's uh, soft ground underneath. But may help reflect a little bit of heat up. Man, that is drafting incredibly well. I think I'm going to go for some of the hardwood already. See what happens. So it appears that this stove is based on the little bug design. Very simple circular design stove that made in England. However, that stove is two panels that are pre-curved that you hook together and they have little uh, notches that'll help it to go together. This stove is a little bit different in design so can't copy it, call it a clone. I might say inspired by the little bug. But uh, yeah. Okay so what I'm going to do is if I see if I can't get the pot stand back on top. A little burning myself. Oh yeah, that was easy. Give this wood a chance to catch. Make myself a bit of lunch. We'll see how it performs as it goes. And then we'll wrap this video up. Okay, so I know this is only my first time using this new Luxata stove, but I am impressed. Maybe it's the height of it, the volume of it, the good ventilation at the bottom, but it's drafting well. This questionable wood is burning very well. I'm using my new Christmas gift, one of the Stanley Adventure cup pot sets. I know a lot of people have them, and uh, I don't know, I, I waited to, to have one, but finally uh, I was given a gift card that I was able to go out and purchase one of these and add it to my set. It's a good size for doing something like what I'm doing today. You can see it sits well on top of the stove. Adding wood seems to be very easy at this time, as long as I don't knock the cross stands off, which I did once already, so you just have to make sure the cross stands stay in place. You can see that I have a considerable amount of scorching taking place down on those split wood. Uh, I expected that. Yeah, that's fine. They're sitting on top of frozen ground, so I'm not, I'm not worried about that. All right, I think my water is probably getting hot. Let's have a quick look. Oh yeah, it's getting there. Then I'll make myself some lunch. I think I fogged my camera up. And uh, then we'll wrap this video up. Okay, here's the stove after its first burn. It has discolored as expected, as you would think so. Uh, you know something, I just realized a really cool benefit of this, even though it is stainless steel, which normally retains quite a bit of heat, because this steel is so thin and so light, in order to get it cool enough to put away, I was able to, with my glove, just lift it off, set it aside in the snow while I was extinguishing the fire. And uh, by the time I had the fire extinguished, the stove was cold enough to handle. Actually, it's quite cold now. So I'm going to do a disassembly of the stove just so you get an idea on how to do that. Obviously, take the cross stand off the top. It is a little sooty in the inside, but uh, I'm not worried about that because that, uh, of course, is why it has the little nylon sack. So find any one of the four seams. Press inward on the seam. With the holes down by your thumbs, move them away from the rest of it, and it will just come apart. So it's just the reverse of putting it together. And as I mentioned, since all four panels are the same size, there is no right way or wrong one to where to start. Now here's an interesting observation after first use. It has taken a curve that it didn't have before. So it, the heat has caused a set in the spring steel, and now there's no, they're not, you know, it still hasn't lost its temper, but it has received more of a curve. That should make it easier to put back together again the next time. 
All right, so what I didn't mention is, and uh, I, I, of course I'll put in the show notes below, the height of the stove is just over five inches. So from top to bottom, it's just over five, five inches. And although I don't have it assembled right now, the diameter of the stove is five and a half inches. So it is a good size stove that will hold a fair amount of wood. Okay, let's wrap this video up. So the Luxata, I'm going to call it the Little Bug inspired wood stove. I have it disassembled and put back in its little nylon sack, as you can see. It was only first use, but uh, based on my experience with the other Lixata stoves and the quality that they put into them, I expect this to be no different. Um, of course, I'm going to be using it for quite a, quite a long while, and then I'll do a, a long-term use report on it. My observation at this point is, is that it's an, an extremely... I was actually surprised here in the cold, wet, damp uh, forest floor on top of the snow, on top of some split woods, how quickly it, the fire came to, uh, you know, it, the fire grew inside of it, how well drafted and ventilated it worked. Now, I was using my Stanley Adventure kit, so uh, it's not as big as the diameter of the stove, so it didn't have any chance to block the, the uh, airflow off. But the height of those cross stands, I think, are good inch, inch and a quarter above the top of the stove. I think there's going to be plenty of airflow even for a much larger pot than this. And it appears to be sturdy enough that it will, on a level surface, hold a good heavy pot. I can't get over the lightweight. Do you know one of the things that I, I realized I could do with this stove if I don't want to use it as a wood stove, why not just use it as a windscreen? So I could have put it together that circular formation, foregone the, the, uh, the cross stands, and put an alcohol stove down inside and I would have had a perfect windscreen for use with, a, with an alcohol stove. And I'll probably do that as uh, carry an alcohol stove along with it for those times where you don't want to take the time to process wood or it's just the weather doesn't, isn't uh, making it easy to put a fire together. I'll put the links in the show notes to where you can purchase this both on eBay and I believe on AliExpress as well. But at this point I'm calling this a good buy and I think something you may want to look into. Okay, that's all I have for you now. Why don't you do what I did out today, which is to get out and explore and take that path less traveled because I know it will make all the difference. Bye for now.